folks, Michael here. And Rupert here. We're the Prehistory Guys, delighted to be continuing the Callanish Conversations. And today we're talking with Professor Duncan Garrow of University of Reading, who is, along with colleague Fraser Sturt, involved in some fascinating work on Lewis. Yes, namely excavating and indeed diving on a Neolithic Cranach, not very far from the stones of Callanish themselves. So what is a Cranach? Well, probably best hear that from the experts. So let's not waste any time. Let's say hello to our guest. So, Duncan, welcome. It's so fantastic to hear you're back up on Lewis to excavate one of the Neolithic Cranachs that are dotted about the locks here as part of your Islands of Stone project. Tell us about the project and what you hope to achieve, and uh, not least of all, uh, what is a Cranach anyway? <laughs> So a Cranog is uh, really an artificial island in a loch. It's as simple as that, but it's got an exciting name, um, a, a catchy name. <laughs> um, and um, myself and Fraser Sturt have been working, as you guys know, um, on um, Cranogs in the Outer Hebrides, and specifically we've been focusing on Lewis so far mm. um, because um, Chris Murray... Um, a local diver who subsequently worked with Mark Elliott um, has basically found a lot of Neolithic pottery um, in association with Cranogs in Lewis because that's where um, he lives uh, and we've been trying to um, follow up on the work that Chris and Mark did um, by um, surveying them and this summer we've been um, doing our first kind of major excavation which has been really exciting Mm. That's mm. great. So How old are the Cranachs? Sorry, what does that? How old are the Cranachs? Yeah, so these are about five and a half thousand years old. Um, right. So that's great. A bit older than Kalanish, as we're going to be on Kalanish website. Yeah. <laughs> oh, interesting. So yeah, how have yeah, they been yeah. found? Uh, um, so um, some of them um, are known about already, but obviously not the age of them. Um, so the one that we're working on is on the Ordnance Survey map as a cairn. Um, but um, um, so they're kind of known about in, in the local area as something that was there. Um, but the Neolithic um, aspect of them was, was uncovered by, by Chris Murray um, diving them with, with his friend Mark Elliott. So, so yeah. how, roughly how many do you think there are in the Outer Hebrides? Mm -hmm. uh, do you know? Well, and, and are they, are they yeah. just, you mentioned Lewis and, uh, and North Uist. Uh, so are yeah. they just there or are they more widespread as well? So that's the, what we're trying to find out on our project, which is um, the Islands of Stone project funded by the AHRC. Um, and we're trying, we think it's very likely that there are Neolithic Cranogs all across the Outer Hebrides, quite numerous. Um, but we have to, we need to find stuff to demonstrate that, don't we? Um, <laughs> rather than just think it. Um, so uh, one was excavated in the 1980s by Ian Armit and his team. Um, and that was in North Uist, Island Dommel. Um, and then everyone thought there might be more and none turned up until Chris did his work. And mm. all of the ones that Chris has found are in the Isle of Lewis. Um, so we are, our project and, um, Steph Blankshine, who's the postdoctoral researcher on it has been doing loads of work, basically trying to find out more through satellite imaging and also searching through old archeological records for finds that might give us a clue about some of them being Neolithic rather than later in date, yeah. which they usually are. Right. So the ones that you've looked at so far, I mean, they seem really small. What do you think went on there? Were they, what were they being used <laughs> for? I mean, do you think people yeah. actually lived on them? And uh, well, if yeah. not, where did they actually live? Um, so that's a really good question. Um, and one of the main questions we're trying to resolve, I guess. Um, so they are really small. Um, mm. the, the one that we're working on at the moment is about, 12 meters across above the water um right. so pretty small um but the work that we've been doing over the past few weeks we've literally been back filling the, the trench today um has revealed a, a quite an extensive um timber structure going out on un the underwater archaeology so the team that fraser's been leading um extends way beyond the stone 
um, circumference of the site. Oh, right. So we're now <clears throat> thinking maybe you know that early phase is big, and and that's something we need to resolve in the future. Yeah, interesting. Because I think in many people's um, eyes, if they have heard the word Cranach, they associate it with a timber structure, with a, a timber dwelling out on uh, on stilts mm. rather than a yeah uh, a, an island of sorts. Yeah, yeah. and that's perhaps really the one you know the, what we've been finding out is that maybe this the original phase of the Neolithic one we've been looking at at the moment um, was like that exactly, Michael. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we've uh, we've heard whispers that one theory is that these are feasting sites with people coming from as far away as Orkney to join in festivities. Uh, tell us more about that. <laughs> yeah, we did. I didn't really get into what what they were for, did I? In your in answer to your previous question, <laughs> uh, which is always a good side step to make. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't. It's possible that they were living on them, especially in the wooden phase of the one that we're looking at. But otherwise, they seem too small. There's very little material on the the stone islands themselves. Um, and Chris and subsequently we have found loads of um, pots broken in the locks around them. Um, so one idea is that people might have been coming to them to have a big party, basically. And part of that party was throwing the pots into the lock around them. Um, and I think that's um, a good, a good um, theory. Uh, we haven't quite proved it, but I think it's definitely... Um, one of the best ideas about what they were for, at least some of them mm. um, so far. Mm. Uh, there are, uh, We haven't got any direct evidence that they're coming from Orkney, um, but with the Orkney, they do have Unston Bowl pottery, um, which is mm. shared with Orkney, so there's definitely some kind of links there at the very least, absolutely. Interesting. So how, uh, if at all, do you reckon these sites um, might relate to Kalanish at all? Yeah, so... Is there um, a link? We're working in essentially the same landscape. It took me 15 minutes to drive. Um, I'm, I'm talking to you in, in, in Kalanish um, yes, at the moment, um, and it's 15 minutes drive from site, um, so just seven miles or something like that. Um, and um, I think that our sites are... Um, providing a, a you know an important context because they're say three four five hundred years older um, than Kalanish um, and it's really interesting to think about these kind of places that acted as a focal point for a community um, where you're certainly creating very large stone structures even if it's quite a different kind of stone structure to Kalanish mm. Um, and then, then perhaps you, you know, in a way, our sites have insight as we were just discussing about the kind of ceremonial activities that might have gone on there, in a way that you don't necessarily straightforwardly have the the evidence for at Canonist. So both kind of kinds of site can help us understand the other one, if you see what I mean. Oh, mm -hmm. well, that would be fascinating going forward. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, uh, we need all the help we can get. Don't we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we have to ask. Midges, do you think do you think folks use these sites in locks to get away from midges? I mean, they are a nightmare up there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the brief answer, having experienced some midges in the last few weeks, is no, um, <laughs> because um, we it, it's normally fine because only a little breeze will get rid of the midges, and most of the time. But we've had some. Um, very a couple of very still days, and it was hard with the midges. Mm. But I can tell you scientific evidence of my experience that the midges were just as bad on the island where oh, I was right. mainly digging okay. as they were back at the shore where I had my tea breaks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't do any scientific counting of them, but in my subjective opinion, they were just as bad in both places. <laughs> so I'm not sure that's, that theory quite works, but I think further, you know, t midge tests are required. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well uh, from a scientific point of view, obviously that seems to be uh, uh, settled. Theory disproven. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, quite. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, about the field work itself, um, how long do you expect to be working there? Um, are, are people allowed to visit? Um, um, it's uh, it's um, it, we <laughs> we've been working. We're we're approaching the end of the excavation. So um, yeah. in terms of the excavation, 
Um, there's not very much to see anymore, which is a shame. Um, yeah. We've we've had a few visitors, but not loads. It's been a bit tricky because of COVID, mm -hmm. um, and um, so we haven't had our normal very open approach to people with things we've just wanted no, sure, to keep sure. the numbers down and yeah. things like that but it's, um, it seems to me a bit of a mystery uh, the whole idea of working on a crag and a crag, uh, or excavating a, a crag what does your you know your daily routine consist of yeah so um we're, we're all working as a, as a team um, but sometimes you might get the impression that there is an underwater team and an on land team on site. Not that we ever have disharmony, of course. Um, but um, uh, but that is seriously what what happens because there's only a few um, people that are um, skilled divers, um, and then people like me that just can dig holes on land without any complicated scuba equipment. Um, so we, but really, um, uh, it's been great because we've literally had one trench that goes from the, across the, the Cranog and then down into the water, essentially the same trench. Oh, right. So, um, that's been really nice. And, and we always, you know, that's, it's kind of a metaphor for the, for the excavation. We're trying to understand yeah. that site through underwater and on land excavation um so and the different um teams work in in obviously very different ways um and we have our own pace um but it's really nice to watch you know we're on land watching the the divers just off the edge of the cranog doing their thing oh, that's um great. Yeah. and we've all had a chance to go and snorkel because it's so shallow that you can actually see what's going on with the snorkel so to see lovely timbers and things like that has been great Fantastic. I'm so glad I asked. Um, but what uh, going forward, what uh, what will you uh, be doing with the results of the work, and um, how will the world get to find out about it? Do yeah. You know, um, so um, we are we've got a couple more seasons of um, field work um, left in the project. Um, so one of those is going to be looking for more of these kinds of sites. Um, probably um further down south in newest um mm -hmm. because as we said before we know there's quite a few in lewis and we need to find a few more in newest um but not, then so that'll be more survey and lots of diving and then another year we've got another year of excavation um which we need to decide whether we're going to do another f um, month at, at the site we're on at the moment at borgersdale or um you know cash in our chips and do another site somewhere else Okay. So that's a difficult decision, but we'll be making it at some point. Um, we have, um, we'll be um, doing the normal um, excavation monograph and that kind of thing, but that won't be out for a while. So people um, should um, check out the website, which is um, cranogs.soton.ac.uk, which is Southampton, um, and okay. they can find out more that way. Fantastic. Terrific. Well, Duncan, thank you so much for joining us today. And really, you know, best of luck with the rest of the excavations. And uh, you know, we're really looking forward to seeing the results in due course. Thank yeah. you for inviting me along. Great uh, to talk pleasure. to you. All right. Bye, Take yeah. good care. Bye. See you.